What's going on guys, this is Rob, and in today's Beyond Omega level video, we're going to be doing things a little bit different, because instead of covering one character, we're going to be talking about an entire race of characters that are basically some of the most powerful beings in all of the Marvel Universe, the Celestials. And I wanted to do this for a couple reasons. One, because all the Celestials are relatively the same in terms of power level, and I say that as a generalization. Sure, there are slight differences between each of them, but they're all pretty similar enough that to understand one of them is to basically understand all of them. Secondly, there really isn't enough material about one single celestial to merit its own video, so we're just going to cover them all here. And I think it's important for the series to have a video explaining who the celestials are and what they're capable of because they are integral to the history of the Marvel Universe. So much so that a lot of the videos that we've made over the years make reference to the celestials when describing the feats of powers of another character. So if you don't know much about them, it's hard to make sense of how impressive those feats are. So the celestials were created by Jack Kirby and made their first appearance in Eternals number two in 1976. But their history within the continuity of the Marvel Universe goes back billions of years, and their origin was a source of confusion for many readers for several years. Thankfully, in recent years, we've gotten a little bit of clarity on how the Celestials came into being, thanks to Al Ewing's Ultimates 2 series in 2017 and their involvement in the Marvel Studios Eternals film. But speaking of Marvel Studios, since they're owned by Disney, I figured it'd be an awesome time to talk about Disney Heroes Battle Mode. Now, if you've never played this, Disney Heroes Battle Mode is a free-to-play strategy-based mobile crossover RPG where you can play with over 100 plus Disney and Pixar heroes from Big Hero 6 to Wreck-It Ralph, Inside Out, and more. The game centers around Digital City where a wicked virus is corrupting every pixel, turning the hero's own friends and family against them. Now, I grew up with all this stuff, so jumping into a game with 100 plus characters that I watched as a kid was amazing. And I personally love challenges Challenges, so facing against enemies that got harder as my characters got stronger was really cool. I'm currently trying to get through City Watch, <laughs> so if any of you guys have any tips on how to get past it, then let me know because I need help. We'll get together and I'll send you my roster, but make sure you guys check out the link in the description or you can scan my QR code to download Disney Heroes Battle Mode available in the App Store and Google Play, and hopefully you can help me get past City Watch. Back into our video about the Celestials, what we know is that before the Marvel Multiverse was created, there existed a single omnipotent entity known as the First Firmament. Now, the First Firmament was quite literally the only thing in all of existence until it grew lonely and created two races of sentient beings, the Aspirants, who remained loyal to the First Firmament and did its bidding, and a rebellious group that desired to create their own universes with life forms that would adapt and evolve. And this is the group that would eventually become known as the Celestials. Predictably, the Celestials and the Aspirants Aspirants found it impossible to remain in peaceful coexistence, and they went to war. Now, it initially looks as if the Aspirants would be victorious, as they construct a weapon known as the God Killer, a 25,000-foot-tall robot that they use to kill billions of Celestials, nearly wiping them from existence. However, with extinction seemingly imminent, the Celestials were aided by the emergence of a civil war among the Aspirants themselves, which saw the God Killer stripped for parts for use in the internal struggle. Now, this proved to be the turning point for the Celestials, who detonate powerful weapons that nearly wiped out the Aspirants as well as the First Firmament itself. The result was that the First Firmament and the Aspirants left reality and a new reality was formed from the pieces that remained in the form of Eternity. Now the Celestials remained in this new reality which would come to be the first multiverse and would take on the role of creating life and aiding in its evolution throughout the multiverse, choosing planets suitable for sustaining life and then seeding them with life and returning periodically to monitor its progress. So this is the origin of the Celestials. And the purpose of this video is not to recount the entire history of the Celestials. We already have that. It's called the Celestials Explained. You'll find a link down in the description. But this video is designed to give you a sense of how powerful they are. And that in and of itself is difficult to do with any level of precision for a couple of different reasons. One of these reasons is the inconsistency from writer to writer and how the Celestials are presented. And another is that lots of times when the Celestials show up, we just kind of see them being depicted as an ominous threat without actually doing anything. So we have a limited number of feats to go on, but we're going to do the best we can. So one thing we know about the Celestials is that they are absolutely 
massive, standing 2,000 feet tall and weighing in at 260 tons or 520,000 pounds. So by that alone, we know we're dealing with beings capable of a great deal of destruction, but size alone is not what it takes to make the Celestials a force to be reckoned with. After all, the villain Apocalypse can grow to 2,000 feet tall and he loses to the X-Men all the time. In terms of what powers they actually possess, the Celestials are able to manipulate matter and energy and able to create life. For that reason, they've been called space gods by many in the Marvel Universe. Now, their power level really is godlike, as demonstrated during an altercation with some of the Sky Fathers of Earth. During the Celestial's third visit, or third host as it's called, one of the Celestials, Erishim the Judge, was attacked by Odin, Zeus, and Vishnu combining their energies. These are three of the most powerful deities in Marvel Comics, but their combined attack did absolutely nothing. In fact, the Celestial threatened to cut off each of the gods from their divine realms, and realizing that the Celestial could make good on his threat, these three deities submitted to Erishim, who promises to return in a thousand years and judge the Earth's worthiness to exist. Now, during the 1,000 year period, Odin orders the creation of the Destroyer armor, which was thought to be indestructible to thwart the judgment of the Celestials. The Destroyer, however, proved to be the opposite of what Odin thought it was gonna be when he was no match for the Celestials at all. Another part of Odin's plan was to grow in size to equal that of the Celestials and use the Odin sword, which had been imbued with nearly all the souls of Asgard. And although he was able to cut off the arm of one of the Celestials, it grew back instantly. And this is just one instance of the inconsistency I was talking about earlier, as in this instance, the Odin sword cannot permanently damage a Celestial. But in another situation, the Apocalypse Twins killed a Celestial with the Asgardian Axe Yarndor, which shouldn't be as powerful as the Odin sword. But like I said, we have a lot of inconsistencies here. And that's just the reality we have to deal with often as comic readers. And this seems to be an outlier in how the Celestials have been depicted. The only caveat I would give to this is that during Rick Remender's run on Uncanny Avengers, there was an enchantment that made Yarnbjorn capable of killing Celestials. But it's kind of weird that that enchantment could be put on Yarnbjorn, but could not be put on the Odin sword. That's that weird little inconsistency that I'm talking about. But another thing we know is that the Celestials are responsible for the creation of life throughout the Marvel multiverse. Now, after visiting Earth nearly 1 million years ago, they modified the primitive inhabitants to create the eternal and deviant races, as well as the race that would eventually become humans, including modifying the DNA of some humans to include the potential to develop superpowers. It was also the Celestials who developed the scrolls into a race capable of shapeshifting through a series of genetic experiments. But just as they're able to create life, the Celestials' potential for taking life is also immense. For example, after judging one planet to be unworthy of existence, a Celestial literally destroys the entire planet and everybody on it. So they must have really done something to piss that guy off. They're also capable of vast matter manipulation as on another occasion, the Celestial Exitar transforms a planet into a garden devoid of any evil instead of destroying it after it's judged and found wanting. Furthermore, the Celestials are capable of creating pocket universes, sustaining the life within them and then also destroying them, as one threatened to destroy the Heroes Reborn universe which was created by Franklin Richards. It was also the impending threat of a Celestial visiting Earth that led to the formation of the prehistoric Avengers team that was introduced in Jason Aaron's current Avengers run. And to get a sense of the power level needed to stop a Celestial, that team contained multiple people who were all pretty much beyond Omega level, which included Odin, the Phoenix Force, the Star Brand, Agamotto, the original Sorcerer Supreme. The fact that so much power was needed to combat the threat of a Celestial gives us an idea of how powerful they are. We also get some guidance as to where Celestials rank on the power hierarchy within Marvel Comics when Thanos states that they're the same level as Galactus, the Stranger, Odin, and Zeus, but not as powerful as Master Order and Lord Chaos. However, this information is probably not accurate anymore, given that we know what happened when Zeus and Odin tried to attack a Celestial. It's hard to believe they couldn't do any damage to him if they're equal to him. We also know that even though they are extremely powerful, the Celestials are nowhere near as powerful as the Beyonders, as we saw when the Beyonders eradicated them from existence during Jonathan Hickman's Time Runs Out storyline, although they have since returned to comics. But yeah, this should give you a really good idea of how powerful the Celestials are, and I don't think there's any argument that they are well beyond Omega level. I would love to see somebody make this argument in the comment section and for someone to agree with it, right? Because if you do, we will all laugh at you. But with that being said, guys, thanks for watching this video. I love you guys to death and I will catch you all later. Peace.